Hello and welcome back. There's a misconception about uh, ham radio operators. Some people conjure up a wild-eyed gray beard huddled over a vacuum tube transceiver in a bunker somewhere. Perhaps they're waiting on doomsday so they can broadcast, I told you so. Many of us are becoming long in the tooth, but it doesn't uh, make us antiquated relics. Indeed, the reality of modern amateur radio is full of exciting new methods, protocols, and tools. Digital radios, software-defined radios, propagating weak signals in mesh networks are just a few of the areas being experimented with by people just like you today. But what about those old vacuum tube transceivers? Well, they're still around, and some hams love to collect them and restore them and, yes, even operate them. So it doesn't matter whether you're into old technology or new technology. The new will someday be old and the old can even be restored and become new again. The point is the hobby has a niche for every interest. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This video is lesson one, part three of the amateur radio technician class license course covering the 2022 to 2026 question pool. I'm your instructor, Gary Stevens, and my call sign is Kilo Echo 2 Golf Sierra. I hold an amateur extra license and have been teaching amateur radio for over 15 years. The sub-element T1C section covers the commission rules from the Federal Communication Commission, FCC. Six exam questions will be randomly selected from this sub-element T1. The commission's rules are divided into six groups with a total of 67 questions. Today we will cover T1C, licensing classes, sequential and vanity call sign systems, places where the amateur radio service is regulated by the FCC, name and addresses on FCC license database, term, renewal, grace period, maintaining mailing address, international communications. Know that new licenses currently available from the FCC for amateur radio are technician, general, and amateur extra. Find this information on the FCC website in the Amateur Radio Service section under Operator Class. We can see that the current licenses available are Technician, General, and Amateur Extra. Make note that there are several grandfathered operator classes. While those classes are no longer given, those holding the, uh, the rights can still operate using them. On the exam, you may see this question. For which license classes are new licenses currently available from the FCC? A, Novice, Technician, General, Amateur Extra. B, Technician, Technician Plus, General, Amateur Extra. C, Novice, Technician Plus, General, Advanced. Or D, Technician, General, Amateur Extra. If you answer D, you're off to a great start. Technician, General, Amateur Extra is the correct answer. We should understand that any licensed amateur may select a desired call sign under the vanity call sign rules. I have a vanity call sign, Kilo Echo 2 Gulf Sierra. My previous call sign was Kilo Delta 5 Sierra Foxtrot Quebec which is easier and faster to say. Information about vanity call signs can be found in the FCC website. More information can be found in part 97.19. If we read the information, we know that the licensed amateur or any licensed amateur can get a vanity call sign. If your test has this question, it will look something like this. Who may select a desired call sign under the vanity call sign rules? A. Only a licensed amateur with general or amateur extra class license. B. Only a licensed amateur with an amateur extra class license. 
C, only a licensed amateur who has been licensed consistently or continually uh, for more than 10 years, or D, any licensed amateur. If you answer D, then you're crushing this. Any licensed amateur is correct. This is important. Transmissions to a different country, where permitted, shall be limited to communications incidental to the purposes of amateur service and to remarks of personal character. As you can see from the previous slide, it is verbatim from Part 97.117. Our government is considering us as goodwill ambassadors. As such, we need to adhere to this rule. Treat it as golden. On the exam, the question will appear similar to this. What types of international communications are the FCC licensed amateur radio stations permitted to make? communications incidental to the purpose of the amateur radio service and remarks of a personal character, communications incidental to conducting business or remarks of a personal nature, only communications of, uh, incidental to contest exchanges, all other communications are prohibited, or D, any communications that would be permitted by an international broadcast station. If you answered A, I'm so proud of you. Communications incidental to the purpose of uh, the amateur radio service and remarks of personal character is the correct answer. This ranks high on the good to know meter. It may even peg the scale. If the FCC cannot reach you by email, your station license could be revoked or your operator license may be suspended. Part 97.117 states that we must keep our name, mailing address, and email address current. In other words, you need to stay on the grid enough to get your correspondence for your license to remain good. Yes, the FCC counts not being able to correspond with you your last strike. What may happen if the FCC is unable to reach you by email? A. A fine and suspension of operator license. B. Revocation of the station license and suspension of the operator license. C. Revocation of access to the license record in the FCC system. Nothing. There's no such requirement to reach you by email. If you answered B, you're on fire. If not, you'll get there. Kilo Foxtrot 1 X-Ray X-Ray is a valid technician call sign format. In this slide, we can see what is called a Work All States map. It shows the United States, ITU zones, and the numbers from 0 to 9 that indicate a geographical area. Many operators print this map and try to contact someone in each state. It's a way to challenge yourself to use your equipment. Generally speaking, you can tell a person's location by the number in their call sign. However, if you move, you're not required to get a new call sign. For example, I lived in Texas, but my call sign is from Tuland. In addition to numbers, there are prefix. That information can be found in the amateur call sign system web page. If we look towards the bottom of the page, we will find this information. So for this question, we only need to look at regions 1 through 10. When the FCC assigns you a call sign, it will be what we call a 2 by 3 call sign. In other words, it will have a two character prefix, a single digit number from your area, plus a three character suffix. Once your license is granted, you may get a vanity call sign called a one by three, a single letter prefix, a single digit number, plus a three character suffix. 
Your first letter will be a K, N, or a W. The exam question looks like this. Which of the following is a valid technician class call sign format? A. Kilo Foxtrot 1 X-ray 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 B. Kilo Alpha 1 X-ray C. W1 X-ray X-ray D. All of these choices are correct. Let's look at this. All three begin with a valid letter with a prefix. Plus, each has a single numeral. However, only one has the required three-letter suffix. So which one do you think is correct? If you answered A, you're amazing. Kilo Foxtrot 1 X-ray 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 is the correct answer. We need to know that an FCC licensed amateur station may transfit from any vessel or craft located in international waters and documented or registered in the United States. This rule is found in Part 97.5 A number 2. When you pass the technician ex uh, license exam, you can transmit anywhere on U.S. soil up to 50 kilometers above it. In addition, you can also transmit from ships in international waters if they are documented and registered in the United States. The exam question is, from which of the following locations may an FCC licensed amateur station transmit? A. From any country that belongs to the International Telecommunications Union. B from within any country that is a member of the United Nations, C, from anywhere within the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, Regions 2 and 3, D, from any vessel or craft located in international waters and documented or registered in the United States. Did you answer D? If so, you're a rock star. There are two exam questions about this. That's how important this is. Again, failure to provide and maintain the correct email address with the FCC can result in revocation of a station's license or suspension of the operator license. This is the same information that we saw in slide number 18. The question is, which of the following can result in revocation of the station license or suspension of the operator license. A. Failure to inform the FCC of any changes in the amateur station following a performance of an RF safety environmental evaluation. B. Failure to provide and maintain the correct email address with the FCC. D. Or C. Failure to obtain FCC type acceptance prior to using home built transmitter or D failure to have a copy of your license available at your station. I hope you knew the answer and chose B. Failure to provide and maintain the correct email address with the FCC. Next question deals with the term of our license. The term for an FCC issued amateur radio license is normally 10 years. Part 97.25 states that an amateur service license is normally granted for a 10-year uh, term. On the exam, we may see this question. What is the normal term for an FCC-issued amateur radio license? A. 5 years. B. Life. C. 10 years. D. 8 years. I know you got this one correct. The answer is C. 10 years. But what if we forget to renew our license? What do we do then? The grace period for renewal after the amateur license expires is two years. We know this from Part 97.25. Let's zoom in a, a little so we can see how to, uh, what it says so we can read it a little better. It shows that we have two years However, in the rest of the fine print, we see that until it is renewed, we have no more privileges, 
In other words, once your license expi expires, you cannot transmit until the status changes back in the FCC database. So the question will look something like this. What is the grace period for renewal if an amateur license expires? A. Two years. B. Three years. C. Five years. Or D. Ten years. Did you choose A? You are going to be in the Hall of Fame. Two years is the correct answer. After passing the exam, everybody wants to know how soon they can get on the air. The answer is simple. As soon as your operator or station license grant appears in the FCC license database, you can transmit on your amateur radio bands. In part 97.5, the wording is murky and in lawyer ease. However, the translation is that your license grant must be in the FCC license database before you can uh, transmit on any amateur service frequency. The exam question is, if you're lucky enough to get it, is how soon after passing the examination for your first amateur radio license may you transmit on an amateur radio band? A. Immediately after receiving your Certificate of Successful Completion of Examination, the CSCE. B. As soon as your operator station uh, license grant appears on the ARRL website. C. As soon as your operator station license grant appears in the FCC uh, license database. Or D. As soon as you receive a license in the mail from the FCC. If you answered C, you get a gold star. As soon as your operator or station license grant appears in the FCC's license database, it's the correct answer. The last thing to learn in part three of this lesson is, suppose your license is expired and still within the allowable grace period. In that case, you may not continue transmitting on the amateur radio bands. Instead, you must wait until the license has been renewed. You should remember this slide. We discussed it in the previous question. On the exam, it will look something like this. Your license has expired and is still within the allowable grace period. May you still continue to transmit on amateur radio bands? A. Yes, for up to two years. B. Yes, as soon as you apply for renewal. C. Yes, for up to one year. Or D. No, you must wait until the license has been renewed. If you answer D. No, you must wait until the license has been renewed. Then move yourself to the head of the class. Great job, everybody. This is the end of Lesson 1, Part 3. Congratulations. This is the halfway point uh, through lesson one. I hope you're finding the material easy to follow and that you can retain the information without much effort. However, knowledge is a subject that can take time, so don't give up. I would like to end this uh, lesson with a quote about learning. Benjamin Franklin once said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Until next time, friends, remember, never stop learning.